Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Tuesdays with Thomas. My name is Tommy Balsamic, and we're here with our exciting crew of my darling bride, Ethel, and the world-famous Miss Brinley. So come on over here and say hi to everybody, Miss Brinley. Dazzle us with your presence. Any second now, take your time. Thank you. Here we are. Tell us your name. My name's Brinley, and my birthday's December 15th. December 15th. Everybody remember that. That's the most exciting day of the year. So, we've settled into our new home in Santa Rosa. Things have been going really well. All the packages have been, you know, boxes have been unpacked. And we're now taking Brindley to school every morning. And school is, thank goodness, only a half a mile away. We have, uh, we have a new show season coming up here soon. Festival startup uh, on, um, let's see, the Candy Dance uh, Festival is in Genoa, Nevada on September 23rd and 24th. And the next show is in Boulder City, Nevada at Art in the Park, October 7th and 8th. And finally, the Del Mar Harvest Festival Christmas Craft Show at the Del Mar Fairgrounds is October 13th through the 15th. So those are really good festivals. We'll have all of our SOS free flavors available to sample there. And if you ever want a large number of bottles, say four bottles or more of any one flavor, please contact us a week in advance and we will bring those for you because uh, we can get wiped out if a whole bunch of SOS free people come to see us and they wipe us out here and some people are disappointed at the end of the show. Uh, because we've sold out of a lot of our flavors. Um, we had a great time at uh, the Chef AJ Summit in Sacramento. Anybody who was there, you know, can attest to having Dr. Goldhammer uh, speak there, along with several other of the well-known uh, doctors. And, oh, finally, uh, a little bit of interesting news. We have, our, we're in the midst of trying something out. We have our Mandarin Orange Balsamic, but we thought we would try a limited run of a midnight orange dark balsamic. So that's on our website now. It's very limited number of bottles for this. We're actually selling it at a $3 discount at $22 for a big bottle. So that's a nice little value for that. But that will only be available for a limited time. When it's, when it's gone, it will be gone unless there's just overwhelming you know, uh, feedback that they really want to have. Then we'll continue it. But... More than likely, that we're just trying it as an experiment. Okay, so we are going to start off. We have three recipes today. Um, we have a young lady named Brenda Patchell who sent us a recipe called Autumn Apple Breakfast Salad. All right, now I'm just going to run through the recipe, but we're going to put it together here uh, before we, uh, we're going to put it together here, but I'm just going to run through the recipe to start. The salad portion starts off with two cups of sweet potatoes cut up into bite-sized cubes, two cups of cooked quinoa, uh, about a third to a half a cup of walnuts that are roasted and rough chopped, a large gala apple into bite-sized cubes, a eighth of a teaspoon of cardamom, a half a teaspoon of Ceylon cinnamon, and two tablespoons of unsweetened applesauce. Now, we have some of our Vietnamese cinnamon that we use uh, at the warehouse and we sell, so we've used that just because we have that on hand. Now, the dressing to the salad is as follows. Two tablespoons of autumn apple balsamic, a tablespoon of ginger balsamic, uh, two tablespoons of apple butter, and uh, Brenda, she likes to use the Eden brand of E-D-E-N, Eden brand of apple butter, uh, two tablespoons of unsweetened apple juice, uh, the quarter teaspoon of the Ceylon cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract, and an eighth of a teaspoon of cardamom, and uh, two to four drops, uh, you could, she used liquid sativa, which is optional. We used a little bit of uh, date syrup. Uh, for ours. So I'm going to put together uh, the, uh, the dressing for this right now in front of me here. So here we go. Uh, starting off with the two tablespoons of 
autumn apple balsamic, and we're just going to put this into a, a small cup in here so we can blend it. And then a tablespoon of the ginger balsamic. Putting that into the sense, we're going to put all these little goodies into the cup. Now, because the balsamic vinegar is relatively thick, I always want to scrape out uh, the little bowls from this because, well, you don't want to leave anything inside. We've got two tablespoons of the Eden apple butter, which is right here. Blob all that in. Thank you. And next was the two tablespoons of the unsweetened apple juice. And the teaspoon of the cinnamon, the uh, vanilla extract, and the cardamom. We've got all of those in the little cup here, and they just tap right out easily. And now I'm just going to give this a nice little spin with a whisk. Now you could, if you wanted to, put this into a, uh, a small jar or a, a, a small a jar is best, like an old empty jelly jar. Uh, whisks that up easy, you could shake that up, but I'm always concerned about getting all of the, uh, of the, the dressing, if you want to call it, all the dressing out of the jar easily. And because the only uh, thing that is a little more difficult to to whisk together is the cinnamon. And we've always had the same kind of problem uh, that just takes a long time with our sweet apple pie balsamic. We have our Vietnamese cinnamon in that and it just takes time to blend it thoroughly. But with a good whisk, this is now completely settled in. So what I'm gonna do now is I have the sweet potatoes that were, um, well, I'll look over the recipe. We preheat the oven to 375 uh, with a parchment paper. In a medium bowl, we are combining the sweet potato, applesauce, cinnamon, and cardamom, and put all of that into the potatoes. And you pop that into the oven. Place the sweet potatoes on a prepared baking sheet and bake them for 50, 25 to 30 minutes or until they're done, which we've already done that section. So I'm gonna put all those into the bowl right now. So we've got that. Next step, while the sweet potatoes were baking, place the walnuts in a small skillet and pan fry them until they're fragrant and toasted. When they're done, let them cool and give them a rough chop, which is exactly what Ethel did just a little while ago here for, this is about the, uh, the size of the chopping that we have. And that gives, gives you an idea. All right, so now uh, combine all the dressing ingredients in a small bowl and shake them well or whisk them well until they're combined. In a medium bowl, combine the sweet potatoes, the apples, the quinoa, uh, three quarters of the walnuts and the dressing and stir to combine. So we've got right now, inside the bowl are uh, the uh, potatoes. Here's the apples that are all in there. Here's the quinoa, and the quinoa, we did those, uh, we cooked this with, uh, what did we cook it with? With the apple juice, unsweetened apple juice. We cooked, we cooked apple these juice. with the apple juice. Half uh, apple juice, so um, one cup of apple juice and one cup of water. All right, one cup of apple juice, one cup of water, fantastic. And that just gave it a, just a, a little bit sweeter. So now I'm just going to blend up the, the ingredients here, and then we're just gonna coat it Walnuts. with the dressing. Put your walnuts in there. Get out here, you. You need to put the walnuts in there also. Oh, and the walnuts, thank you. Don't be shy, <laughs> we're missing a step. Shout out, we're putting almost all the walnuts in. There we are. And finally, we're gonna make sure we get all the dressing out in here. There we are. Voila. And finally, we're just going to give this a good blend. And, uh, and Brenda has on here, uh, serve with a garnish 
of the remaining walnuts and for an extra drizzle of apple balsamic. And uh, on, on the bottom here, she said, for extra flavor, cook your quinoa in unsweetened apple juice. This salad also tastes delicious, served on top of uh, some fresh spinach. Hey, hey, Miss Brindley has just delivered us a plate of fresh spinach. Thank you, Miss. You are a professional helper. And we'll give this a good blend with the dressing. Potatoes, apples, quinoa. There we are. And that's how it all looks. Here's how it all looks just in the bowl. And finally, on the bed of uh, spinach, we'll load this up here and say thank you very much. This is a wonderful, wonderful breakfast salad. Brenda, you rock, young lady. Thank you so much for sending this. Because you sent this to us, you'll be getting two eight ounce bottles of your favorite uh, flavors. And you can send us an email, tell us exactly what you want. And we're going to finish the dish with a little extra drizzle of the autumn apple balsamic. And don't forget about the last little bit of the walnuts. They'll be able to sprinkle right over the top. I have to say, that looks gorgeous. <laughs> there you be. Thank you, Brenda. Beautiful dish. All set. All right, dish number one. All righty here. Now, dish number two. All right, second dish is from the world famous Lori Gibson. Thank you, Lori. You've sent us several recipes in the past and we always appreciate it because you always send us wonderful recipes. This is called a spinach and feta appetizer or a little side dish. Uh, here are the ingredients. Two tablespoons of finely chopped sweet onions, uh, garlic clove, crushed or minced, a teaspoon of minced, of minced fresh ginger, 12 to 16 ounces of fresh baby spinach, two tablespoons of autumn apple balsamic, and three to four tablespoons of crumbled almond feta that, that you can find hopefully at your local um, natural food store. All right, so we have over here already chopped up our uh, the, the onion, clove of garlic, ginger, all set right in here. And uh, so that's super easy to do, along with the um, little bit of the balsamic, the two tablespoons of automatic balsamic. What we're gonna do, Ethel has just turned down the stove over here. We're gonna put these into a, a decent sized fry pan here. And, and we're gonna let these uh, saute for about two minutes. And, and we're just gonna get them going until you can smell the aromatics from the garlic and the ginger. Now, if you need to, we can always uh, put in, we can always put in the, uh, a little bit of water for the, just to, you know, keep it from sticking, but this is a non, this is a non-stick pan, so that won't be a problem. And we've got this bad boy going really well now, and it doesn't take more than just a, really just a minute, because the pan, Ethel turned the pan on just a minute ago, and this is pretty toasty now. So you can see here, the pan has just got uh, the garlic, but it needs to be a decent sized pan because we're going to put 16 ounces of spinach in here and they're going to cook that down for a couple minutes to make it wilted. And uh, so this is, this is simmering nicely, smells beautiful, garlic and ginger and balsamic is a wonderful thing, but as always, anytime you have some balsamic vinegar in a fry pan, be careful. 
cook it at a low temperature, balsamic will burn because of the high natural sugar content that's in the balsamic vinegar. All right, so here I have two eight ounce uh, packages of spinach. They were just gonna pop right in here. And then we'll pop the, the lid on there. I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit more on this just to get it get it going. This is going to completely fill this pan up here. I can hear the spinach sizzling as we speak. Can always add a drip of water in there, Thomas. And you can we can pop just a smidgen of water in here just to get it a little bit steamier faster. So I've got a little bit of water here and I'm just gonna put in uh, just a tablespoon or two just to help with the steaming process because we don't want to dilute uh, that. And so now this is going to sit for the next couple of minutes and um, so we've added uh, uh, just a, a little bit of water just to keep things from sticking in the pan. Uh, we've added the spinach and we're going to cover it tightly and cook until it's wilted. Oh, three, four minutes on there. And then we're gonna put it on one of our plates over here and, uh, and simply uh, pop the uh, wonderful uh, vegan feta cheese right on top and again, there is another silly, easy recipe uh, from, and again, Lori Gibson, send, a, send us an email, Lori, and tell us what you want for your two complimentary samples, uh, two eight ounce bottles, and we will be happy to uh, send them to you for your recipe. Speaking of samples, remember, every time that you send an order to CaliforniaBalsamic.com, we always include two complimentary 1.6 ounce little samples. Uh, Moshari, may I borrow a little sample uh, over there of something? Thank you. And we put in two of these samples. This is our sweet heat, which is generally our first or second most popular flavor to the plant-based community. Seven Herb Italian is number one, sweet heat is number two in a little box called order notes at the bottom of the checkout page is where you'll find uh, the the word order the little box called order notes and then it's, it's a blank box and all you do is just start typing for my two free samples i would like to try fig and pomegranate or sweet heat and seven herb italian whatever the two flavors you want to try happy to send them to you if you don't send, tell us what you want, we will have one of our packers just choose two flavors to put them in based on what you've ordered. But if you do want to send us an email after you've placed your order and then you say, oh, I forgot to put in my samples, you just received a confirmation email from us. In that email, just reply to it and say, I've just placed my order. I forgot to tell you what I wanted for my samples and reply with the email and tell us what you want for your freebies and we'll be, we're able to put those into the order notes box for you so that's good news i'm going to uh, check our our little uh container here with our spinach and give it a little mini stir here and already the pan has dramatically gone down from what it was so i'm going to just give this a nice little stir, get the edges off of there, and uh, I'm just incorporating, getting the all the garlic and ginger into the spinach now, and I'm going to turn this down uh, a bit more because it's it's nice and toasty now. We're using a uh, an electric stove. I have never used. An electric stove until now and that's made it much more of a challenge on, on using we've always had a gas stove and now we have electric so it just takes a little getting used to what they consider is a low simmering temperature how long does it take to heat up and how long does it take to cool down so those are things that you have to learn 
with an electric stove, and we're we're much more comfortable with it now than we were, uh, you know, a couple of months ago. So this is almost done. We're just going to give this another one minute or so, and um, in the meantime, if you have uh, next month, um, we're going to have our our new flavor. Uh, not a new flavor. We're going to uh, have the next month's flavor of the month is going to be, drum roll please, Blazing Habanero Balsamic is going to be our flavor for next month. So if you have a, a, a recipe that uses Blazing Habanero, whether it's a savory or a sweet one, but being a, a spicy hot balsamic. Now Blazing Habanero, for those of you who don't know, the ingredients in our sweet heat, fresh garlic, fresh serrano, and fresh habanero. The same ingredients are in Blaze and Habanero, just more peppers, and a lot more. I'm a bit of a spice wimp from Michigan originally. We never had anything hot. So to me, Blaze and Habanero is just a little too hot for me. I know, Chef, you love the Blaze and Habanero, mixing it with you know some of the smoked hickory and a little bit of tomato paste for your air fries is a fabulous combination. And, uh, but for those of you who can handle the heat, most people who like hot things, they consider it medium heat at most. So um, that's the way that works out. All right, we're gonna go over here, back to our, big watch out for all that steam coming off of there because this is loaded with liquid now. And here we are, this bad boy wilted nicely and I'm just gonna pop this onto our plate here with a pair of tongs. And say, oh, this is lovely. That's that. Here we go. Amazing how cooked down spinach goes to a pound of spinach. <laughs> right, so that was one pound of spinach that is cooked down to just this little bit here. And then we'll add the friendly feta right over the top and another blast of the uh, autumn apple right over the top. Generally do for a dish like this, maybe two teaspoons I know Chef AJ, she loads these up out there. And here's our finished dish. Thank you, Lori. It's beautiful. You've always sent us wonderful dishes, so thanks again for this one. All right. Uh, when we head to the office tomorrow up in Ukiah, we'll be taking our uh, uh, some of the dishes, the breakfast one, and uh, our last one, we'll be taking those up to the warehouse and share with our employees. Patrick, our manager, uh, is having our, his uh, birthday party tomorrow. So we'll be going up there for our, our birthday party. Now, if you remember, over the last couple of years that we've been doing this, I've been going through a little history of uh, Trey Classic California Balsamic, the company that we've owned the last 27 years. And, uh, and this one, we're um, going on uh, about um, when I met a very attractive young lady named Ethel here. Thank you very much. Ethel came into uh, our lives uh, at the Las Vegas Harvest Festival Christmas Craft Show. And she and her uh, boss, Cecily, set up their booth right next to mine. Uh, Ethel had been doing ceramics for 30 years. And they sat there, and of course, you have different vendors next to each other every show. So I went over and introduced myself. And um, her boss, Cecily, turns out when she heard that I was originally from Birmingham, Michigan, she said, Birmingham, did you go to Seaholm High School? And I said, oh my gosh, I did. Did you know Rob Freeman? He's my nephew. And Rob and I were friends back in high school. So what you know, small world that we actually had um, her nephew, who's uh, uh, one of my friends in high school. So um, because of that, anytime that I saw Ethel and Cecily at future festivals, we would chat about, uh, you know, what, what was happening in Rob's life and just chatting what's happening. 
many of the people at the Harvest Festival vendors say, we're heading out to dinner tonight. Come on. And anywhere from two to 10 people might go to a restaurant. And so over the next 10, 12 years, Ethel and I became very good friends. And finally, I asked her out on a date. And she said, absolutely not. I am not dating anyone who lives 500 miles away. And I said, well, let me come down to Los Angeles where you live and let me spend a weekend. I'll get a hotel nearby so I'm not staying with you and we'll hang out for a weekend. And she, she said, all right. And uh, that was done on January 15th and we have been together ever since. And so that's very exciting. We just had our seventh, uh, seven year anniversary when we got married. Um, so that's been ex very exciting to do that. And Ethel has been working with us now for all these years and uh, doing festivals. And when she did a festival selling our products, I said, she is the single best salesperson I've ever met in my life. And she's been using our products for years and years. So that just makes her a natural. And thank goodness that she's been able to help us, you know, and the business has blossomed ever since. And I like to say it's because of Ethel. So anyway, there we are. And finally, um, let's go on to our, our last, our last uh, recipe here. This is from Eileen Mirsky. Eileen, thank you again for another fabulous recipe. This is called Autumn Apple Delight. A simple and sweet SOS-free apple-based treat that is good for you. And here are the ingredients. Four large firm apples washed and cored, a quarter cup of chopped walnuts, a quarter cup of rolled oats, a tablespoon of raisins or chopped dates, a tablespoon of almond butter, teaspoon of cinnamon or apple pie spice mix, two tablespoons of autumn apple balsamic, or more if you really want to load it up. Now the directions. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Peel the apples only a quarter of the way down from the top. You want to keep three quarters of the skin around the base and sides. Um, combine the walnuts, oats and raisins, almond butter and cinnamon in a food processor and pulse it until it becomes a crumbly texture. Uh, stuff the mixture into the core of the apples and drizzle the apple balsamic. Uh, arrange the apples in a baking dish. Pour one half cup of water in with the apples uh, and cover the pan and bake the apples with the half a cup of water for about 50 minutes, so just under an hour. Serve them warm and drizzle the additional autumn apple to taste. Now a little side note, uh, there are many types of firm apples suitable for this recipe. And some of the examples are Gala, Jonathan, Jonna Gold, Honeycrisp, Braeburn, Granny Smith, Golden Delicious. A good tasting apple is the key to this tasty dessert. Right on to that. Eileen, thank you very much. And we have the finished dish, oh, right here. And again, finishing the, the apples with a nice bit of the balsamic vinegar is just a wonderful way to add flavor to it. And you can see that the peels were cut down just to here so that the skin of the apples is keeping everything together because these get nice and nice and soft when they're cooked for just under an hour. And there it is. So we'd like to thank everybody for another exciting episode of Tuesdays with Thomas. And we'll look forward to hearing from you. Please send us your recipes for the Blaze and Habanero Balsamic, our feature flavor next month in October, and send them to orders at californiabalsamic.com. And uh, when, you, when your recipe is featured on the program, you get two complimentary eight ounce bottles of your choice. So we want to thank everyone again, and Chef, we'll look forward to seeing you next month. I'll hope all is well, and take care, everyone. All right, bye now.